Now that we understand the concept of dynamic offset profiles, we'll explore another related feature in Civil 3D 2018 called connected alignments. A connected alignment is a lot like a fillet between two alignments, except this fillet is dynamically linked both horizontally and vertically to a proposed design. Let's take a look. On my screen, I have a continuation of the geometry that we saw in the previous session. Let's look at a couple things. Right here, I've got my existing ground surface. Over here, I've got the proposed road center line called Brickville Road. I used this alignment to define some offset alignments that represent the left and right edges of pavement. Let me mention that these offset alignments have associated profiles. Let's take a look. I'll select one, and from the launch pad, I'll choose Edit Offset Profile Properties. From here, I'll choose the Offset Parameters tab, and we can see the profile has a negative 2% cross slope. I'm going to close this, and I'll press Escape. I have also created an intersecting alignment called Perryville Road. I'm going to zoom out. If we pan up here, we can see the finished grade profile for Perryville Road. Let's pan back. Just like with Brickville, I created offset alignments that represent the left and right edge of pavement. These alignments also have associated profiles with a negative 2% cross slope. Now, let me mention that in this example, I'll be using a connected alignment to define a dynamic curb return. That being said, connected alignments aren't just for curb returns. They can be used anytime you'd like to tie two alignments together using a radius. To create the connected alignment, here on the Home tab, I'll come up to the Create Design panel. I'll open the Alignments menu and I'll choose Create Connected Alignment. I will then select my incoming and outgoing alignments. I'm choosing the edges of pavement in this case. I will then click the area where I'd like to create the fillet, and I'll press Enter. In the dialog box, I can give my connected alignment a name. I'm going to call this Northeast Return. I can then give it an optional description. Right here, I can see the names of the connected alignments. Here, I can control the geometry. I'm going to give this a 35-foot radius. Note that I can assign a connection overlap. This overlap will trace the incoming and outgoing alignments and their respective profiles, just like the connection overlap that we see in the curb return tab of the intersection wizard. Down below, I can stylize my alignment. I'm going to choose the proposed edge of pavement style, and I'm not going to assign any labels. Now, just like with an offset alignment, connected alignments can also have a dynamic profile. If I select the Connected Profile tab, we can see this feature is turned on by default. Right here, we can see the names of the profiles that we'll be tracing using this connection overlap. In this case, we'll be tracing the finished grade edge of pavement profile for both of those alignments. Let's give the new profile a name. I'm going to keep the current alignment name, and I'll just append FG to the end. I'll keep the default profile style. And then down below, I can assign parabola settings using length or K value. Now, in this case, my geometry is quite short. I really don't need the parabolic curves. I'm going to leave this setting the way it is. It won't even come into play. Let's click OK. I will then zoom in, and we'll take a look. Right here is my connected alignment. It also has an associated profile. Just for a second, let's take a look at where these new objects are stored. If I come over to the Prospector tab and expand the Alignments heading, Right here, I'll open Curb Return Alignments, and you can see by default, connected alignments are stored here. Let me drill down into this alignment, and right here, we can see that dynamic profile. Now, I'd like to see the profile in the drawing. I'll do that by selecting the alignment, and then from the launch pad, I'll choose Profile View. I'm going to accept all the default settings, and I'll choose Create Profile View, and I'll click to place this view up above. Let's zoom in. Note that we can see the incoming and outgoing 25 feet of profile that are being traced. We can also see how those profiles have been connected. It's important to note that this profile is dynamically linked to my design, so if either the incoming or outgoing profile changes, this profile will update as well. Let's try that. I'm going to split my screen. I'll open this leftmost in Canvas menu. I'll go to Viewport Configuration List, and I'll choose Two Vertical. I will then focus this view on the left side on my curb return profile, and then on the right, we'll take a look at the profile for Perryville Road. I will select that proposed profile. I'll click this grip on the end and I'll pull it up. Note we can see the change. I'll press Ctrl Z to put things back the way they were. Let me pan this up to the Brickville profile. I'll select this one, and then we'll grab the PVI and I'll pull this up. Once again, we can see the change. I'll press Ctrl Z to put things back. When I'm finished, I'll come back over to this view on the left. We'll open the in-canvas menu, and I'll set this back to a single view. So not only is this geometry dynamically linked from a vertical perspective, it's also linked horizontally as well. 
Let me zoom out. We'll go back to the plan view. If I select the Perryville Road alignment and grab this grip and pull it over, you can see how that curb return updates. It is always maintaining tangency. I'll press escape to deselect. We'll zoom in. Now let's talk about how we can edit these components. If I select the connected alignment, we can see a series of grips. Let me mention that I have my dynamic input turned on. If yours is not, you can press F12 to do that. Using the dynamic input, if I hover over these grips on the end, I can see the amount of overlap. If I select the grip, I can pull this out and I can assign the overlap based on a station, or I can press the tab key and I can set it by measurement. Let's go with 50 feet of overlap. I'll click the grip on the other side. I'll press tab and we'll put a 50 foot overlap over here as well. If I select the round grip, I can adjust the radius of the return. For right now, let's set this to 50 and I'll press enter. When the alignment's selected, if I come up to Alignment Properties, right here I can adjust the name of the alignment and its style. Here's where I can control where it's stored on the Prospector tab. Note that we have our standard Alignment Settings tabs in here. There is a new one down at the end called Connection Parameters. Using this tab, I can see the name of the incoming and outgoing alignment and the connection overlap. Right here I can adjust the curve radius if I want. I can also set this geometry to be dynamic or static. I'm going to keep things the way they are. Let me click the X to close the dialog box, and I'll press Escape to deselect. Let's zoom out. I'll pan the drawing up, and we'll focus on the profile. If I select the profile, note that we cannot adjust the incoming and outgoing segments because those are tied to existing profiles. That being said, I can do anything I want with this geometry connecting them. I can use the grips on the end to adjust the connection point. If I come up to Geometry Editor, I can add additional components. As an example, I'm going to add a new PVI right here. Let me click the red X and we'll take that away. And then I'll click the X to close the toolbar. If I select the profile and go to Profile Properties, right here I can adjust the profile name or its style. In here we'll also find our more traditional profile settings. We do have a new tab on the end called Connection Parameters. Here I can see the name of the incoming and outgoing alignment and profile and connection overlap. I also have access to the parabola settings that we saw earlier. For right now, we'll keep things the way they are. I'll go ahead and click the X to close the dialog box, and I'll press Escape to deselect. Now that we understand how the connected alignments work, let's create another connected alignment to represent the northwest curb return. Once again, I'll open the alignment menu, and I'll choose Create Connected Alignment. I'll select my incoming and outgoing alignment. Let me mention that the order in which you select these controls the alignment stationing of the connected alignment. I will then click to set the location of the fillet, and I'll press Enter. We'll call this Northwest Return. I can see my connections. I'm going to keep the default radius and connection overlap. I'll keep the default styles. Let's go to the Connected Profile tab. Over here, I'll keep all of the previous settings, and I'll choose OK. Let's zoom in. There we go. If I select this alignment, we can see that I have another dynamic curb return that will update automatically if my horizontal or vertical design changes. As you can see, using the new offset profile and connected alignment features, Civil 3D 2018 gives us even more ways to maintain dynamic connections between the components of our designs. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.